Hey Internet, my name is Zebby and welcome back to Space Engine. Okay, I've traveled a little bit back in time, so you can see down there we have the 8th of April and on 8th of April Mars was in conjunction with the Sun, so this means uh, when we are zooming out a little bit that Mars, Earth and Sun were on one line and we I want to demonstrate this with you. So as you can see right now, uh, it's a little bit bright over there. Oh wait, I can enable the orbits. Okay, um, let me see. Can we? Can we? Sorry, it's a little bit wonky right now. I want to be a little bit more outside and a little bit more close to it. Okay, yeah. Um. I hope you can see this a little bit. Over there is the sun, ob obviously. And over here, this bright dot is our Earth. And up there is Mars. So if we could have uh, a ruler or something, then we could draw a line. And the line would uh, connect the Mars, the uh, Earth and the sun. So on the 8th of April was uh, Mars in conjunction with the sun. This is pretty amazing. So we were on one line. But there's another interesting thing, and this is happening, I think, by the release of this video today on April 14th, because on April 14th, it the um, the uh, point where Mars and Earth are the closest together, and this this flyby. So this is pretty interesting, and you might ask, okay, on the con uh, conjunction, it seems that uh, Mars and Earth are at the closest point. Why it's a week later? Well, this is because if we are zooming out a little bit more, you can see that the orbits of the both planets are not completely circular. They have a little bit um, an eccentric orbit, and yeah, due to this fact. Um, even that there's a conjunction, there might be a better spot when both planets are a little bit um, closer to each other because of the um, eccentricity of the orbits. And in this case of this year's Mars flyby, it's, uh, well, today uh, for you, I think, when I release this video on April 14th. And I want to demonstrate you this a little bit. If we are going over to our Earth, I want just to disable the orbits. Now let's fly up to Earth. And here we are, here's our Earth. I want to demonstrate this if we are going a little bit to the North Pole. So there we are hopefully uh, all the time at the same spot. And over there is Mars. I've highlighted or I've uh, clicked on Mars right now. I want to track this orbit, uh, no, this object. And you can see the distance from uh, our Earth uh, up to Mars is currently 0.621 AU. AU is an astronomical unit. One AU is basically the distance from our Earth uh, up to the Sun. Although this is a little bit unclear because I, I, s I have shown you that our Earth orbit is still a little bit eccentric. So um, it's not all the time one AU up to the Sun, but basically it's the distance from our, our Earth up to the Sun is one AU or one astronomical unit. And Mars is currently 0 0.621 AU away from us and yeah down there you can see we are or down there you can see we have 8th of April and now I want to speed up a little bit in time so we can follow this um wow um maybe my spot wasn't the good one so let's speed up a little bit Please don't get seasick, it's looking like a wave. And you can see up there, we have now the 12th of April, the 13th of April, and the 14th of April. Stop. Can I... Okay, wait, wait, wait. One time. Okay. So we have now the 14th of April, so it's basically today. And now we are at 0 0.6. 1.8 AU. So we are getting a little bit closer to Mars and once I would do narrow a little bit time fast forward the distance would increase again. So that's why from 8th of April until the uh, 14th of April we have gotten a little bit closer to Mars and now we have the closest point to Mars and this is happening on April 14th. So today and this is pretty amazing and as you see it well um, you can start calculating 
uh, what the change was. Let me disable the track of Mars. Over there we can even see the moon. And this is pretty interesting that we are now um, at the closest point to Mars. Um, I'm a little bit fast. So yeah, basically this is pretty interesting and now we are at the closest point or we have our closest point to Mars. And we can now zoom out again once more. Let me do this. And I want to enable the orbits. Uh, let's zoom out even a bit more. And yeah, now this is exactly the closest point, as close we can get to Mars. And from this point on, our, our Earth is a little bit faster than the Mars, and we will now um, increase our distance to Mars. And yeah, this is pretty interesting, and I just wanted to demonstrate you this by having a little bit of a time warp, as you have hopefully seen in the distance, that the distance was getting closer and closer as we passed uh, through this, this one week. And yeah, this is pretty amazing. I, I really like the fact that uh, Space Engine makes it possible to me to demonstrate you this and to also show you the uh, distances. And as you can see here, the um, eccentricity of the orbits, we could have even a little bit uh, or get even closer to Mars down there is the distance between Earth's orbit and Mars orbit uh, much closer, but in this flyby currently uh, the shortest distance is around this point. So yeah, um, this is pretty amazing. And now I want to talk about another interesting thing and this is the moon or one of the moons of Saturn. Let me fly up. Oh, I need to click on this. Let me fly up to Enceladus, uh, Enceladus, Enceladus, uh, however you want to pronounce it. It's an ice moon. It's one of the the moons of Saturn, and there was recently a new finding about this ice moon, because one of NASA space probes, the Cassini space probe, which is flying around Saturn and it's visiting all our different moons of Saturn has done some gravity measurements of Enceladus and they figured out that there is a, um, well, an anomaly, well, might be not an anomaly, but there is a change in the gravity field of Enceladus in its, uh, at its south pole and they came to the conclusion that there might be an ocean under the ice shelf. So this is pretty interesting that there might be uh, liquid water underneath the, the big ice shell of the ice moon Enceladus. And this was uh, a great finding that there might be liquid water on a different celestial body in our solar system. And it's especially interesting because um, Enceladus is far way out and they they thought that there shouldn't be the possibility of having liquid water because it's so way far away from the sun that there isn't enough um, heat to keep water liquid. But apparently they came to the solution that there might be liquid water under Enceladus South Pole and there were even some... Um, they saw something that there were some some um, there that there was some uh, water evaporating from the um, from the south pole of Enceladus, and now after some some more flybys and gravity measurements with the Cassini probe and the Deep Space Network, they did some some measure measurements of the trajectory of the space probe, and they figured out that there was a change in the trajectory as it flew fly by the the South Pole and there was a conclusion that there might be something uh, with a higher density underneath the ice shelf and they, well, they came to the conclusion it could be liquid water. Well, they have obviously no proof for this, but it's, uh, they are pretty sure that this could be and this is pretty exciting. So, yeah, this was another great finding uh, about our solar system and um, so, yeah, this is pretty amazing and I just wanted to highlight this as well and the can I find this I have written some notes down there um, so there is the the gravity measurements uh, suggest that there's a large possible uh, regional ocean from about 10 kilometers or six miles deep and it's beneath the ice shell um, of 
which is at this point possibly about uh, 30 to 40 kilometers thick or in other words 19 to 25 miles thick and the the eventually okay, and possibly and um, there might be a slight very tiny little chance that this liquid water may host some some uh, microorganisms or anything like this like extraterrestrial life but uh, well this is just uh, an idea that there might be something like this because there's liquid water and when there's liquid water there can be some forms of life but um, they won't come to this point or they can't prove the point but this is pretty interesting and yeah so much about this so this is pretty interesting that there might be a 10 kilometers deep ocean underneath the thick ice shelf of Enceladus uh, yeah, so much about Mars and Enceladus and um, speaking of moons, I want to fly up to or fly back to our Earth. Let me fly back to our Earth. Because when we are speaking of Earth, we have also our moon. Let me just look for the moon. The moon is over there, it's pretty small, because tomorrow on April f or 15th there is a total mu uh, lunar eclipse which will happening around, uh, what was it, 2 o'clock or midnight at the west coast of America. So if you are living in the US or if you are currently swimming in the Pacific, and you are looking up into the sky and you have currently no clouds and it's um, April 15th and around 2 o'clock in the morning or midnight in the morning you might see a red moon because the moon at, at this point getting into or the, the sunlight to the moon is currently blocked by the earth and we have a total lunar eclipse. So this is the next interesting thing. I tried out if I can demonstrate this with you uh, using time warp and I placed myself on the surface of Earth and I did time warp and I watched for the moon. But unfortunately I wasn't able to see this or maybe I was able to see this but it was a little bit uh, too not, not bright enough or so. So it was really hard to see. And even though the moon as you can see is just uh, a little tiny dot so um, even if there is a chance of getting uh, the thing displayed in Space Engine, I'm not sure that you can see this on YouTube. So I don't want to do this time warp thing and I just want to say, okay, um, there is another interesting thing coming up and this is a uh, lunar eclipse coming up on April 15th and you can see this if you're in the right spot on our Earth. So this is pretty interesting and here I think this wraps oh let us let us just fly up to the moon let's speed up a little bit and we fly up to the moon so we can have a beautiful view back on our earth uh, don't fly past it let's slow down a bit uh, okay maybe oh okay this was a little bit too fast let me where is the landing button let me land on the surface of the moon and now we are on the moon and I think it's where is our earth um, I'm not good in finding things oh of course yes uh, because we are we are having a full moon the earth and wait I get a nice idea I think we are on the on the near side of the moon. What happens if I'm doing a time fast forward from this side? Let me see this. Can we? No, I don't think so. Maybe I'm on the wrong spot. 15th. Okay, uh uh huh okay it seems not to be working uh, let me just go back i want to go back to the 15th of april huh okay this is strange 
I thought this earth should be in front of the sun at this point. But okay, uh, apparently not. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Um, maybe I'm doing just something wrong. So yeah, um, I think before I do some more strange things which aren't working, I will wrap up this episode. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the short demonstration of the... Um, what have I done? I did the, the conjunction of Mars and Earth and Sun and I did the closest point of Mars which is happening today on April 14th and I mentioned that there is an upcoming uh, lunar eclipse which wasn't working here in Space Engine or I'm just not good enough in controlling Space Engine so I can see the, the, the eclipse and yeah and oh yeah and I talked about Enceladus and its possible ocean underneath its ice shelf so a lot of things going on a lot of interesting things were happening and I hope you liked this and if you do so I would much appreciate if you do the usual YouTube stuff like liking commenting and subscribing and I hope I see you again in one of my next space engine videos whenever something interesting is happening in space or in our solar system and I can demonstrate this with the uh, with space engine so yeah thank you so much for watching again uh, yeah. Until next time, my name is Abby. See you!